Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the first government speaker now, and today I'm going to talk about how this house banned private funding for political parties. Now, first, we have to understand what we, the government today, understand by this whole motion. So, we have to define terms, and we think that what this house will ban public funding for political parties means that uh, this, house, this house would basically stop any private investors in uh, putting money in social gatherings, whether it's music and concerts and rock and all that stuff, when politics are dis discussed. Basically, discussed. Basically, we're going to implement a bio uh, ideology, as in bring your own rules. But uh, no, really. What we are going to talk about is banning private funding for real political parties, which actually means make it illegal for anyone to privately fund uh, these kind of parties, and we mean that only state funds should be uh, given. Now, what's the case of vision? I'm going to talk about the problem in the state's law and the plan and primary threats, while my colleague and I is going to talk about the ripple effects. What is our team right now? The key for today is that private funding is bribery made legal. Right, so let's go. Let's go with the problem status quo. So, first off, we have corruption. Right? So, right now, there's a lot and a lot of corruption in the in the, uh, in the modern world as we know. And we're talking about average countries where there's an average political system and where they have average economies, right? And there is a lot of corruption. Why? Because, and we can tell this, because for example, in the European Union, uh, the people who actually go to vote aren't that many. Why? Because they don't care. Why don't they care? Because they see because they see that there's a lot of that there are a lot of things going wrong and that their vote, no thank you madam, their vote can act, can't actually change anything. Why can't they change anything? Just a second. Why can't they change anything? Because people are gonna, because people care for their own interests. Yes, ma'am. No, we're not, we're not talking only about the European Union, and yes, but in the European Union point of view, yes, little skepticism. And where does the little skepticism come from? Well, basically it comes from the skepticism in trusting the political idea of the European Union. So it's still because the idea of the political union not working correctly, why would it not work correctly? Because it is corrupt. Now, right, we have some other examples, not only the European Union. For example, in the US, we all know about the Bush campaign where, where Bush basically owns oil companies and all the stuff like that, and uh, the war in Iraq. Now, it's a pretty known, really known fact right now that the war in Iraq happened because the Americans want oil. Why did the Americans want oil? No, it wasn't because Bush really thought the Fed talked to him. No, it was companies stuck in Bush. What did Bush say? Why are you guys sponsoring just a second now? Why are you guys sponsoring me? Because you want to fail. What do you want? You want oil. Yes, ma'am. You just said that Bush has private companies and his oh. whole interest in not making the Republican Party being funded by private companies. Now, basically, yes, he does have a private company, but he's also sponsored by other companies because, you know, he gets a lot more influence like that. Now, what other examples do we have? We have the example of Al Gore. Now, Al Gore is an ecologist. He's talked about global warming and so on and so forth. And for that, he's basically become a millionaire. He's a politician who started to put up some ideas, some interesting ideas about global warming. And that means that a lot of companies who are really interested in the process of global warming and in the idea of eco ecology have actually started to fund them, give them a lot of money so that, no thank you, man, so that he will be able to continue this, uh, uh, this message. Now, what, uh, what other thing does corruption mean? It also means that we have economic pressure on political decisions. What, what, what exactly does economic pressure mean? Well, it means that some private investors are saying, okay, we want this to happen. And for this to happen, we're going to apply some economic pressure. What does economic pressure mean? Well, basically it involves money, giving and taking. For example, another example in the US is uh, what's happening in the, uh, in the US with the banks. Basically, the banks have all gathered and the US is giving out legislation and um, um, transferring and transforming interest rates in relation with what the banks are telling them to do because their banks are currently 
funding the Bush legislation. Now, this, uh, the third thing is parties actually become dependent on funds. No, thank you. What does this mean? Well, it's not only a gift, a gift thing from the uh, from the private investors. It's also a take. Uh, no, thank you. Look, when you get money for a political campaign, you start wanting that same money next year or in the uh, next four years. What does this mean? It means that you want to do favors for the companies that have given you money so that you get money. So this means that these parties actually become dependent on these companies. Now, what is our what is our plan? Our plan is to stay uh, to give a budget to every party from the state. Uh, uh, fund that is quite enough to cover all expenses for the campaigns. No, thank you, sir. And we have to be sure that these, the money that the the, the money that the uh, political parties receive is going to be used for campaigns. Now, what does this mean? Well, let's get a little bit sexy on this, right? So, we want to give budget fund. What exactly is the implication? What exactly is the explanation for this? We're, we're going to get give the sample. We're going to get give one amount of money to win. What does this mean? It means that A, we will no longer have a of banks. Why? Because all parties will have a lower amount of money. Nobody's going to start bribing them legally anymore. And this means that right now, no thank you sir, this means that you will not get bombarded with a lot of information. No thank you sir. You don't get bombarded with a lot of information because basically these public uh, part of these pub parties would not have the money to put into bombarding you with information. The second thing is that basically we the state does have this budget because it only needs to give it uh, like once in four years and it does have have the resources. We're talking about the average. Uh, we're talking about the average time. And uh, what are the direct effects? Well, the direct effects of less corruption basically are the principia here, counts in democracy. In democracy, every man ideally should have one vote. But once you start paying and buying your way into more vote, it means that this uh, very fragile balance is starting to, you know, balance a little bit out in one direction or in another. And that means that democracy in that way, in that way, basically fails. This is my last minute, I believe. Now. Uh, this, uh, and the second part is the idea that taking decisions will be made finally in the interest of the country and not in the interest of the investors. I've already explained to you that because of this corruption that exists, public in, uh, investors can basically legally bribe uh, parties. When parties get elected, they do laws that benefit the public investors. Right now, when you don't have money, when you don't have private investors, you won't have benefits. When you won't have you have political parties working for the people. Thank you.